Hi, I'm Kirby Allison. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're gonna feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Sovereign Great Shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. In today's Q&A video, we're gonna be covering questions about garment care. Remember, if you have any questions or comments while you're watching one of our videos, please ask them in the comment section below each video. I try to get back to as many of these questions as possible. Before we get started, I'd like to announce the exciting new launch of a product within our garment care portfolio. Here at The Hangar Project, we are committed to helping the well-dressed take the best care possible of their clothes, and that now extends to producing one of the finest pressing cloths. So a pressing cloth is a piece of cloth that is used when ironing your garments in order to prevent any type of sheen from developing on your suiting fabric. It is critical never to touch an iron directly to any type of wool or cashmere fibers because the iron can produce a sheen on the fabric itself that can never be removed. For that reason, it is critical if you're pressing a garment to always use a pressing cloth, which is a cotton piece of cloth that you put in between the fabric and your iron to press. Now, this is a staple that everyone should have that does any type of home pressing. And it's something that I actually keep in my luggage um, for whenever I travel so that I can do quick touch-ups uh, to press a nice sharp crease into my trousers. We developed our new pressing cloths in collaboration with a bespoke tailor based in New York. And I can say this is one of the finest pressing cloths that I've seen. It's available now on the Hanger Project for $20. You can find a link in the description of this video. Our first question today is from Michael and it reads, does the garment brush remove lint from t-shirts? I tend to wear black t-shirts more frequently than dress shirts. Um, so Michael, a great question and absolutely a garment brush can be used to remove lint uh, from any garment uh, simply by brushing and uh, t-shirts certainly are no exception. Now we at The Hanger Project recommend using a natural bristled garment brush for any garment as opposed to one of those uh, double stick tape uh, lint rollers. What I find with the lint rollers is that they can actually leave an adhesive residue behind on the garment itself, which actually does more to attract lint and make it more difficult to remove uh, than if you're using a garment brush. But that said, laundering your garments properly can really go a long way towards reducing or eliminating rent lint. And I have two suggestions. First, any type of dark garments, especially like a black t-shirt, should be washed inside out. And the reason is that it helps prevent the buildup or collection of lint uh, on the outside of the garment. By washing it inside out, it reduces uh, that uh, outside fabric coming into contact and pot potentially accumulating any type of lint. So if the garment is going to pick up any type of lint, it's gonna be on the inside of the garment so that whenever you pull it out of the laundry and turn it right side out, uh, you don't have as much lint on the outside of the garment. But additionally, you should always wash garments with light garments. So for instance, if you're doing a load of t-shirts, you should only wash your dark t-shirts with dark t-shirts and never with, say, a bath towel because those other items are prone to linting and a, a white bath towel is gonna lint and get all over your black t-shirt. Uh, and, you know, a garment brush can do a lot to help remove lint, uh, but, you know, if you've washed your black t-shirt with a bath towel, you're probably never gonna remove all the lint from that t-shirt. Another thing that you can do is use a product like the Laundress's Dark Detergent, which again helps protect the color and saturation of the color in darker clothing items, which further helps prevent the appearance of what looks like it could be lint. A lot of lint is just the cotton fiber is losing some of their color, and so if you have a fiber that has faded a little bit on a black t-shirt, it's gonna appear as though it's linted, but really what you're seeing is that the fabric is just beginning to fade after multiple laundries. I always say that the lifetime of a garment can always be measured in how many times you launder it, and so it is particularly important to take extra care uh, in the laundering of something that's important to you. Our second question today is from Yang Lu, and it reads, I usually wonder after times how to clean the brush, for this one, a garment brush and a shoe shine brush. So a garment brush is really something that shouldn't really need to be cleaned. I mean, you should only be using this uh, uh, on your garments. You know, maybe you're using it to remove a dry stain. Um, and so, you know, cleaning your garment brush is really easy. Uh, you know, for my garment brushes, really, I'll just take the bristles uh, over a clean hand uh, and that's enough to take any type of dirt or accumulated lint off of the brush. 
Now, shoe shine brushes are a little bit different. Uh, this is a, a natural bristled a shoe shine brush that we use with the burgundy polish to show really how much polish a brush can accumulate. And for something like this, uh, what I would recommend is really just taking it against a clean towel or a chamois to just help wipe off any type of residual polish. Now, with the shoe shine brush, you're not worried about any type of lint accumulating on the bristle of the brush, uh, but with the garment brush, you would be. So I would never recommend cleaning the bristle of a garment brush on uh, any type of cloth towel because you're just gonna accumulate lint onto the bristle, which defeats the whole purpose. So for a garment brush, you know, again, I just take it against a clean palm of my hand, and that's uh, plenty to really clean anything that's on these bristles off. Our third question today is from Vasily uh, Velki, uh, and it reads, uh, how to remove any hairs that are on a garment? Any of the brushes that I own don't help much. So, uh, you know, it's a great question. One of the hardest things to remove from a garment is cat hair. I mean, cat hair is almost all but impossible. Unfortunately, a garment brush might help get a little bit of cat hair off, uh, but it's not gonna be incredibly effective at totally removing it. Uh, you know, you can try a, a one of those, uh, you know, lint roll brushes with the adhesive tape. I mean, that works. Uh, but the problem you're gonna run into is then you're leaving an adhesive residue uh, behind on the fabric itself. Uh, so my recommendation is really to just be careful to try to minimize the amount of contact any type of nice garment is coming into with any type of animal hair, especially cat hair. Uh, and unfortunately, if you do get a bunch of cat hair on your garment, you're really just gonna have to go through and kind of pick that off uh, really hair by hair, unfortunately. Our fourth question today is from DJ Danny D, and it reads, Hey Kirby, what is your opinion on putting cedar blocks in your closet to permit moths? So we have an entire series on moth uh, detection, moth prevention, and how to eradicate moths. I mean, it's one of the largest threats to a wardrobe uh, that you'll ever encounter, probably next to children. Unfortunately, I have to deal with both, uh, but moth uh, really moth prevention uh, is just as much a part about moth detection. So the first thing I'd recommend is uh, purchasing one of our professional moth traps that we sell here at the Hanger Project. Uh, it's basically a double stick adhesive tape where you put a lure on it. And the reason you do that is because if you have a moth problem, you wanna detect them as quickly as possible so that you can respond. The longer that you go without detecting those moths and really taking quick action to uh, kill and eradicate them, the more damage that they can have in your wardrobe and we've all heard horror stories. I mean, there's no quicker way to ruin a piece of clothing uh, than having moths eat at it. Now that said, there are things that you can use to help to deter moths and uh, cedar is certainly one of those. So uh, if you have some space in your closet for cedar blocks, uh, absolutely. Uh, the important thing to keep in mind is that it's gonna help uh, but is not going to be 100% bulletproof effective. And the other thing with cedar is that you have to keep it properly oiled. Now we do sell a cedar oil uh, for use in re-oiling your cedar, but if the cedar has lost its aroma, it's gonna have no effect on moths uh, to keep them from entering your closet. Now that said, there are some other best practices that we outline in our videos on moth protection. First, if it's an out of season garment, uh, that's always gonna be what moths go for. And so unequivocally, we recommend storing out of season garments in one of our garment bags or one of our garment storage boxes. The reason is, is that a physical barrier is gonna do the best job protecting your garments and there's nothing more bulletproof than our luxury garment bag that we sell here at The Hanger Project. It's also important to always keep your closet door shut and the lights off because moths have to travel into your closet in order to do any damage. So the more you can do to seal off your closet and prevent moths from getting into your closet, the more protected your garments are gonna be. In my closet, uh, as you all know from my closet tour video, I have an air filter that I keep, and I actually have the, the filter pointed at my door so that as it blows air, it blows it at the uh, underside of the door where the crack is to keep any type of moth from traveling in under that crack. And I've actually even considered uh, getting one of those door sealers to totally seal off that door so that whenever it's closed, I don't have to worry about any moth sneaking in. A great question, and make sure you check out our series on moth detection, prevention, and eradication. Our last question today is from Mr. Dub02, and it reads, is there any way of repairing minor thread damage to dress pants for moths? 
So Mr. Dub, great question. Uh, the answer is yes, you can uh, find a reweaver, which is someone that can reweave the fabric to really uh, conceal uh, any type of damage uh, to any fabric caused by moss, but you should just be aware that it's very difficult, it's not always successful, and it can be extremely expensive. Uh, and even if you find a really good wee weaver, uh, just because you have damage doesn't mean that they're able to fix it. It really depends on the type of weave, the finesse of the fabric, uh, the size of the damage. Uh, that said, um, you know, reweavers are a dying breed. There's not many of them left. And so if you have a really important piece, uh, what I would do is recommend uh, reaching out to Ray Fabricare. Stu Bloom, who owns it, uh, has a fantastic, probably one of the nation's best reweavers. And if you call and speak to him, uh, uh, they'll allow you to send a garment for them to evaluate. You know, that said, they're extremely reluctant with accepting garments by mail because they have to really look at the piece to first determine uh, whether or not anything can be done. And it is important to know that reweaving can run into the hundreds of dollars. So uh, it would need to be an important piece in order to justify uh, the work. But that said, yes, it can be done. Uh, and there still are people around here in the United States that can do reweaving. Here at The Hanger Project, we take garment care incredibly seriously. You know, as I always say, you know, we love to help the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. And what I love about proper garment care is that if you take a little bit of extra effort to properly launder your items, to brush them with a the garment brush, to store them properly in a garment bag on a proper uh, suit hanger, you can protect and extend the life of your garments very easily to allow yourself to really invest in higher quality pieces. That's really the fundamental thesis of The Hanger Project is that you can afford to invest in quality if you know how to take care of it. You know, garments live and die in the closet. It's where they spend the majority of their time. And the lifetime of a garment can easily be measured in how many times you launder it or send it to the dry cleaners. So if it's an important piece, it's absolutely worth taking a little bit of extra effort, educating yourself, and properly caring for your garments. As always, if you have any questions about garment care, we're here to help. Either ask them in the comments section below, or if you need more personalized or faster service, call customer service. We're always happy to answer your questions. Once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only do these Q&As give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering, but they allow me to take a moment to acknowledge my appreciation for everyone's involvement in this channel. I absolutely enjoy this platform and how it's allowed me to connect more directly with all of you, and I really have fun interacting with you and answering your questions. Remember, if you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content makes this more fun for everyone. I read all those questions and comments and personally do really try to get back to as many of them as possible. In today's video, I'm wearing my bespoke Chris Despis, a gray herringbone suit. Uh, this is the first suit that I had him made, my second garment for him uh, right after my wedding tuxedo. Uh, as I've said in many of these videos, this without question is the most versatile suit that I own. The nice fine gray herringbone pattern gives this gray suit some nice subtle visual texture and it's just incredibly easy to wear. You can wear it during the day, you can wear it at night, you can wear it to a wedding, you can wear it to a funeral. The suit was cut uh, as a uh, notch lapel with a single button, uh, making it uh, quite traditional and formal. Uh, it has besom pockets, but today you can see I have the flaps tucked in. Again, just elevating the formality of this ensemble. I'm wearing it with my trademark white dress shirt. Uh, my shirt today is from him or Johnny Brothers or MyTailor.com, uh, my first shirt maker and one of my favorite shirt makers out there. Um, and it's made with the very special white fabric from David John Anderson. It's a DJA 330 by three, which is the finest white cotton shirting available anywhere in the world. It's certainly a novelty item. The 330 staple length is the longest staple length that you can find for cotton shirting. And it's so fine, it has to be a three ply yarn in order uh, for the yarn to withstand uh, the weaving process. A beautiful shirt, uh, fun to wear and incredibly soft. Of course, in this shirt, I have a pair of our horn collar stays. And because of the finesse of this fabric, it's incredibly important to have a soft edged collar stay. Uh, like all the collar stays we hear at The Hanger Project, our horn collar stays have a finely sanded and rounded edge that you don't have to worry about tearing or ripping through the end of your collar stay sleeves. 
I'm wearing this suit with a beautiful a white uh, Simona Godard pocket square and one of our burgundy uh, Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade ties. The pants have a single reverse pleat, tab trousers, and no cuff. I'm wearing a pair of my favorite dress socks. These are a gray small dot melange dress sock that we carry here at the Hanger Project. And my first pair of bespoke shoes from George Cleverly. This is a whole cut burgundy shoe with broguing on the toe. My watch today is a Rolex Datejust, which was a gift from my grandfather. The glasses I'm wearing today are from Francois Pinton in Paris, uh, and they're just a nice, simple acetate frame. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thanks for joining me.